Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. It's nice and sunny outside. We're just going to make another example today. Um, I'm just going to go through a few of these these uh, primitives, as you call them, squares and rectangle shapes and all that stuff and see a little bit of what you can do with those. And uh, just, just focus a little bit on the beginning here. Now, make sure you watch the older videos so you know what's going on. Or if you know a little bit of SFML and how to create a window and what all this stuff means, um, then that's great. But otherwise, yeah, check out the videos. Now, the frame rate limit is on 60. We're not going to be doing any delta time stuff yet. That just means that we'll, we'll uh, make the game frame rate independent a little bit, uh, like I talked about a little bit on the last video. Now, that means that if you have a slower computer, your program is still going to run at the same speed, although it's going to lag, but it's still going to be at the same speed. Your character is going to move the same distance with that time, um, even if you, you're experiencing lag. Otherwise, what happens is that it goes really slowly, so your character doesn't move the same amount uh, depending on if you have a fast computer or slow computer. So to make a frame rate independent, you need to use that SF clock and stuff like that. So we'll go through that a little later. Uh, but yeah, let's just go ahead and make something here. Uh, make sure you comment out your old, your other uh, examples here if you're using the same technique I am uh, with all the CPP files in the same project. Now what we're going to do, like if you remember last time, we made a SF, SF circle shape. Um, circle. We'll just give that. Now, circle takes a radius, so make sure that's like 50 uh, float. Now, some of these shapes have different constructors. Now, you can give it a point count, meaning that it's going to have either less of a circle shape, it might look more like a, you know, it's going to look more jaggy, what do you want to call it? Um, and just make sure you can, you, or not make sure, but you can give it different shapes, basically. But if you leave that empty, you, it'll be a kind of a perfect circle or whatever you want to call it. And then you have a, now I have SF included, I don't have to use this. You have a rectangle shape, and this is a rec rectangle. This constructor takes a vector 2F. Now, it takes a position for vector 2F, and it takes a, This does this take a position? No, I don't think so. Uh, but this takes a position and a size. Now, a vector 2f is a a thing that SFML has created to make two floats go together. Since everything is based on x and y coordinates, you can use these vector 2f's to kind of uh, put two floats together. So, you know, you have a float a and you have a float b, right? Now, what if you want to use two of these at the same time. Then you make a vector 2f. Now f stands for float in here. There's a vector 2i which gives us two integers together uh, and a vector 2f basically is a, a combination of two floats. Now you can give those different values or whatever. And then if you call this vec, what you can do is you can say vec.x for example. And then you'll get the x value, the 10 or vector y and such. Now a size is a size in y and a size in x, right? So uh, it uses that vector to to decide what si what size or what position this rectangle is going to be in. So we'll just say vector 2f. Now the first thing is a is a what is it? Um, is a size and the second one is the position. So we want this to be 50 and then 50f. Or we can make it a rectangle, let's say 100 uh, in the y. So it's going to be a long kind of rectangle. And then we'll just say vector 2f. And we're going to give that the position, maybe put it at, I don't know, how big is our screen? Hmm. We'll put it at 400 and we'll put it at maybe 200. Just like that. Now this should work um, why are you complaining? Vector 2f. No instance of constructor. Argument types of f, vector 2f, vector 2f. Well, that's what I did. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, not sure why this is complaining. What if we just do... That won't work. Hmm. That's weird. What if we just 
give it one vector. Okay, so that's going to be the size. Whatever, we'll ignore that. Um, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. So what we're going to do is we have a rectangle. Uh, we're going to put the circle. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, we can we can use a function instead. Set position. So every every shape kind of has a all these different functions. Now we use a vector 2f for the circle position. We'll just leave it at actually we'll just leave it at 0 0 vector 2f. And then we'll say uh, the rectangle is going to be set position uh, vector 2f. Well what do, what do we say? 400 and uh, 200. Okay, so that's going to go down a little bit. Now we have two objects here. Now, if you want to see what functions these have, there's some good functions. You can you can change the color. You can change the uh, you can change a bunch of stuff. Um, let's see, it's set set. You can set the outline color, outline thickness, fill color, the origin. Kind of don't play around with that really right now. Just focus on that stuff. You can set the rotation. That has to do with the origin and stuff. Uh, the position. You can set the scale as well. There's a difference between scale and size. Um, then you have set texture and texture rec. So you can you can kind of change textures and you can put images on these these objects and make them look cool. Like in a game you want to have a texture for your character. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this here. Now I already showed you circle last time. I'll show you how rectangle looks. Now remember you have your update to move all these things and you have your draw function. So we're just gonna draw this window dot draw uh, circle doesn't matter which um, what do you call it which order you put these in just that the first one here is gonna be like this is gonna be drawn over the one that's drawn before so you wanna keep that in mind maybe but otherwise really for our sake it doesn't really matter now we'll run this and we should have a different different, uh, what do you call it, experience here. So you have our rectangle here, and we have our circle in 0, 0. So see how we moved it over here? Now what it is, what is happening is we're clearing the screen every time, we're drawing our two objects, and we're kind of displaying them again. So let's see, what else can we do? We can make a we can make lines and stuff. Uh, well, I'll go through that later. Actually, what I want to go through right now is the changing of the color. So, circle dot set fill color, and then you just do color, color, and then you can choose between all of these different ones. But what you can do as well is you can say color. This is what I didn't show you last time. Whoops, color. So this takes four values. It takes a a RGB value, those three values, and then the fourth one is alpha value. So that's how transparent the the circle will be. So let's say that we give it a a two five five two five five two five five. That's the maximum value. Uh, so it'll be white basically. Everything, all of these three is white, and then totally uh, totally visible. And if we put this down a little bit, we put this down a little bit. The blue value, maybe we say it's a hundred green. We'll get a different type of color. Let's do the same for our rectangle. Let's give this 255 and maybe even less. Maybe 100. And then we'll run that. What happens then is we get different colors here. Whee! And that's that's great, basically. That's great. And in the update now, what I want to show you is what we can do is uh, move these shapes. Circle, that move. I moved it one way last time. I'll keep moving this the same way. 0.5f 0 .0 and then maybe 0.1f so it's going down as well whoops so it's going to go down in y and it's going to go to the right and then we have our uh, rectangle and we'll move that the other way minus 0.5 and then upwards so minus 0.1f and this is going to make these kind of move across each other. What do you want to call it? See? So they're just going towards each other. Kind of looks like an eye there. And then it keeps going. 
So that's kind of what I wanted to show you right now. I mean, uh, there are ways to make lines, there are ways to make all kinds of shapes with, with points and stuff like that, if you want. But you don't really need to in a game. It could be nice with lines and stuff, but yeah. Uh, we'll just stick to this in this example. I hope you learned something. This is kind of what I showed you last time, but I showed you set position now and then set fill color. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can rotate these as well. Why not? Um, then I'll show you what, what the issue is with rotation. Rotate. Let's say we rotate this. Maybe one, two floats each, each frame. Oh, whoops. What we have to do is here. Uh, I'll just put that there. And then we'll say rect dot rotate. Rotate that a little faster, maybe five floats. And then uh, go ahead and just show you that. So what happens is that it's going to rotate along the origin, which is at the top left. So see this flipping out. They're not rotating along their uh, centers, but they're rotating along. See how they, they're, it's a little transparent. You could see it through the other shape. But yeah, they're rotating along the origin, which is set on the top left. Now, if we set the origins uh, to something else, it will rotate correctly. But yeah, thanks for watching and, and staying with me on all this and all the support. And I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye.